Hello out there. Just wanted to talk about this pretty awesome drum machine that I got uh, not very long ago. I actually had it for almost about a month now and wanted to talk a little bit about what I've experienced with it, why I got it, uh, what, you know, maybe how it compares to some of the other things that I've purchased in the past uh, related to drum machines. Yeah, this thing is pretty awesome. I will say I wasn't too impressed uh, at first when I started to go through the voices and I, I kind of had a feeling that I was gonna really rely on the effects a lot to get something out of this that uh, to get it sounding what I'd hoped. And I, I was really looking for a lot of flexibility from, you know, that I know is very dirty, grimy. There's a lot of drive on each one of these channels and I wanted to find, I wanted to be able to, to maybe make some smooth drums with it as well. I wanted a little bit of flexibility. I know that we only had four voices on it, but I just wanted to make sure that I could kind of get crunchy when I wanted to and a little more soft when I wanted to and uh, not have to process a whole lot of stuff externally to get there. Uh, so I saw this unit months ago or a year ago maybe and uh, was super impressed with the size. Uh, this is something I'm totally into. I really love big box kind of units that have knobs that are easy to get to, one control per function for the most part. <clears throat> and uh, this was something definitely that got my attention right away as soon as they as soon as they soon started sending screenshots out on the internet on this thing coming out. Uh, I was really, really interested in it. Didn't really care so much for this so much. I, I thought this would be enough, but you know, having the sequencer built in is really, really awesome. So uh, the idea is, as I started to learn more about it, you know, the idea was to make this more into a performance type of drum machine. And I know many companies have tried to do it and they've done a pretty good job with it, but I really appreciate what these guys did, Erica Sense, on really going out of the norm of, hey, let's make a smaller box, let's pack a lot of stuff inside it behind a little screen, and we'll try to give you as much external control to go live if you want. Uh, but this has so much accessibility from the front panel and a really good creative way of using this kind of limited, in a sense, 16 steps per track. Uh, each track connects you to each one of these four voices that are on there. And having an on the fly stuff you can do, it really feels like one of the most live instruments I've ever used. Not just a drum machine, but just any any synth because of, I think, how they're pushing the envelope with the sequencer. It's simple. It doesn't do all the tricks that a lot of other boxes do, but it does it enough to where you feel like you're really interacting with it and you're getting results. And I really, really like that. You know, just being able to adjust the groove on the fly, uh, change your last step on the fly, changing a pattern, going to another kit on the fly, uh, muting things on the fly. Real simple, hit shift, press a button, mute it. And you can see the lights, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but you, you can change the uh, behavior of that too if you don't like it that way. Maybe you just always want to have access to mute things in and out when you want. The sends, right? This is awesome. You plug something into the send on each one of these channels or whichever one you want. And I've got this one running into my computer and I'm able to chain up whatever I want in there and crank this up and it sounds incredible. It really does. Some of these, everything's in mono. I'm not, I'm not much of a mono person. Uh, yeah, it does bother me, <laughs> I'll say. I like things in stereo. I like to have the option to get things in stereo. And by putting that in there it was pretty genius for me to have that. I can run these into pedals. I can run it in the computer, like I just said, and having this just kind of take over and send that audio over to the send and then turning it off, pushing everything, I think, out the main main outs when you shut it off is pretty awesome. I've really had a good time using that. Uh, really, just way more impressive than I thought it was going to be, honestly, in, in, in real practice once I got it working. 
so I've really had a, I've really had a good experience with this thus far. You know, really, it was love at first sight looking at it, but it wasn't really love at first listen, I guess, at that, you know, it took a little bit of tweaking to get around and kind of understand the algorithms and the modes. And you have three, basically almost three different voices per algorithm. And then within each voice, you have three different modes that are in there. So you can see you have a little bit of flexibility in each one of these voices. You can't run samples on it. They're kind of already built in. This is digital. There's some analog stuff though. That's going, I think the filters might be analog. Um, I probably need to read a little bit more on that, but uh, the compressor is really awesome. I haven't done a whole lot with the, the bucket brigade delay stuff. I need to do a little bit more on that, but uh, I you know, really sp specifically was just picking voices out. I don't know if you could see up here, sending them into the computer and processing that way. So it's been a really, really cool experience just learning the unit. It really hasn't been that difficult to go through the manual and, you know, figure out something real quick and, and apply it. There hasn't been too many head scratchers in there. I did have a couple, but for the most part, it's been a pretty pleasant, pleasant experience learning it and, and reading the manual it hasn't been such a, such a head scratcher, like some other things, you know, that kind of take you out. You can literally just take this thing, set it down, start probably, you know, putting steps in, playing, go tweaking, do, doing stuff on the fly and have a good time. And you know, only when you want to get to something and you go to the manual, you know, understanding what these odds are odds one odds two and then probability and they did a really good job of kind of setting up showing you from left to right you know here's going to be your ratchet 2x here's going to be the odds if you use the odds one it's going to be in the black so one two one three one four one eight odds two is going to be in, in the two three the three four four five seven eight and then finally probability do you want 10 percent 25 50 90 that's awesome. That's super cool. Um, when you get into a little bit more of the programming or moving patterns and kits, I think that was the hardest part for me. Uh, when you want to go in and save a pattern, simple. I've got a few patterns that are already saved in here, but for this, we'll talk about this block. Up. We'll start with this block up here. So I've got a pattern here, saved it. Cool. Whatever kit I was running before, is going to apply to that. If I press kit, I can do some tweaking prior to this, do some tweaking, whatever, and I could save that kit and then save the pattern. Whoops. And then that pattern will be connected to the kit. I could go and start another pattern, do some tweaking on the kit, go back to the kit, make sure I save it into a new bank, then come back to the pattern and then save the pattern so that pattern binds to the kit. This way you can move from pattern to p pattern and have kit changes, which I find super cool. But getting to that point was pretty confusing. And a lot of times I'd overwrite my pattern or my kit by pressing record and then hitting the, the actual button in order to, to initiate the save. So so that, that was a little strange. And I hope I explained that properly. Probably didn't. Probably did a poor job, but <laughs> it's working in my head now. Uh, the kits in the in the patterns, yeah, they, they, they can work together or they can work totally different. Uh, they could, you could have one kit following a bunch of different patterns. If you want, you can change this stuff in the back on how they link. Maybe you don't want them to link type stuff. It gets deep. It gets pretty deep, uh, with that, but that was definitely something I struggled a little bit with and, uh, was finally able to get through it. And once I, once I got it downloaded into my brain, it was actually pretty, it's pretty easy to remember now. But it did take a few tries and it was a little bit of frustration. And I would say if you're going to pick up one of these things, when you're getting into the patterns and kits to, to take some time, do some experiments and play around and move around with it till you get a good feel for it. Because I think that's a super powerful feature of this synth, of this yeah, drum synth, right? So really, really cool on the fly stuff. Super, super awesome unit. I hope that other companies out there will see and not be afraid to make things that are a little bit bigger for some of us that might want to perform live to have one knob control type 
think just like this. I give a huge shout out to Erica Sense for taking a chance on something like this, making a bigger unit for some of us. I do think there's there's quite a few of us out there that are not scared of having bigger units. You know, we've got enough table space, you know, 40 by 30, you know, maybe even less uh, and just have a couple units. We don't need to have like, you know, a, a million units. I mean, I find that for me personally to be really confusing and overwhelming. I like to have a few units that that do things really well and that I'm able to get to and that are really playable because I, I want to perform live. Like I really enjoy the live aspect of performing. Uh, this, I have a performer to the right and these are, these are the footprints almost identical. And even it looks like the knobs are the same. Uh, the quality of the knobs, turning them are, are just second to none with this. The, the feel and build of this thing is absolutely amazing. It really is. And the performer's always been that for me. So it's nice to see that over here as well. And they both work great together uh, with the performer having four different voices that are on it. It's, it's a big box, right? But both of these, I got four voices here. I got four voices here. That's pretty good for me. Running these out into effects and doing things, especially with these scents, having this live control, what I want to do with the, with the effects and stuff. It's just super, super, super cool. So I, I feel like, you know, and there's still the honey, honeymoon phase, right? Cause it's only been probably about a month now. But I really feel like this is the first thing I want to reach for. I know it's a new toy, but it just when you see it laying out there and it's ready to go, you have everything already hooked up. It's just, it's so easy to just sit down and start programming stuff right away. It's not as quick at first when you're trying to tweak to get what you want. But when you spend some time with it, you start to find those sweet spots, I think, for everyone. Because it can get really mean and aggressive. And it could get pretty chill at the same time. And it's not just a, a drum, you know, a drum synth. You can, you can make drones with this. You've got decays on each one of these voices that you could turn up and just let, let things just go. Uh, I think that this is a super cool first effort. Really? I know that there's going to be iterations. Erica sent that always seems to do iterations on stuff. I had a, a, a Centrex, which I loved very much. And then they came out with the Centrex too, and, and uh, some of their other Eurorack stuff. You've seen lots of iterations on things. I'm sure there probably will be. Uh, does this need it? Uh, I don't feel like it really needs an iteration right now. Uh, this thing has, you know, there's so many, there, yes, there's so many limitations with this compared to say the electron boxes or whatever, but they've just provided enough stuff in here to work around some limitations. And you might've heard like sometimes less is better because it tends to pull out your creative juices, get you going. This definitely does it. That 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 absolutely is one hundred percent true for me personally. When I'm working with this, I feel like the limitations, and then the kind of like, oh, but you can get around it this way. Oh, you're kind of limited to sixteen steps. Oh, but you can you know work through that with getting something to launch every quarter or whatever. You know, tweaking these, getting things to evolve and move around, and then you can take one pattern, and then you could have three or four patterns chain and work in a, in a loop so you could get more than say 16 steps. You can go to 64 steps or, or maybe even, I think that's as far as you can go 64 steps with your patterns. But, uh, that's like super cool that they've done that in this unit to, to limit you. And I guess drive you to have to be creative, but, but in a fun way where you're not like sitting there scratching your head for a couple days going, Oh, that's how I can do it. It's actually pretty quick to get to that realization, re just reading the manual or just getting familiar with some of this stuff. It, it, for me, at least personally, it got into my head and, and it wasn't too hard to get around some of the, some of the, what appear to be limitations on the surface because of its one knob per function. So, you know, this does have sub menus that they are in there. You know, that's a little bit of a drawback. Um, I would love to have seen more of some of those sub menu things printed on here, even just, even just super small. So I know it's like, Hey, if I want to set up an accent on a step, I go to shift mod. And then I know that's where it is. I, I don't, I can't see that there. So I'm not sure I have to, I do have to look at the manual to figure out where that's at. 
usually these things you set them up ahead of time. It's not something you're looking for during the middle of a performance. So, so that's okay. But it would be nice to have that there because those are just some things that I'm just not going to memorize or it's hard to, unless I'm just on the box nonstop, which maybe I might be, but like the MIDI, you know, right now it's on internal. If I want to sync everything, I need it. I need to move this over here to external. And, and there's quite a few, quite a few settings around. I'm not going to go over those, but you know, this video is just my thoughts on this thing. And hopefully I'll do just sort of a work through, uh, next to show you kind of how I vibe with it, how I start with the unit and how I get to get to a beat and those sorts of things. But now I just wanted to give people just a, just a heads up as, as a user that got one of these things was so, so lucky to have it really blessed and happy to have one and, and work with it. And I just want to give everybody a, yeah, this, this is amazing. Honestly, it's really super, super awesome device you know if you if you find yourself getting one of these things be a little patient you know play around with it but get to know your features there's not that it does there's not it's not that overwhelming it really isn't and you just go through and you run your tests and then you get that stuff kind of in your head and then you start to kind of get your brain in the unit to synchronize in a way that's really really cool so you know be aware that it definitely wants to be aggressive it you know wants to be crunchy that if that is your thing, then right out the box, this thing is going to blow your mind right out the box. But if, if you're looking to kind of go a little bit more smooth, you might have to work a little bit at it. You can't, nothing's quantized with this. I guess there's no quantizing with the tuning. So, you know, if you're going to do synth type stuff and you want to play things in key out of this, you're going to have a little bit of a, of a head scratcher. You know, you probably have to run some sort of tuner on the back end and watch it as you're as you're getting everything set up to get your key getting key with whatever you got running along with it i'm using it primarily just as doing little snappy drums here and there so i don't uh, i have not worried about that i've not used this as a, as a as a synth i've done some drones on it but they haven't it hasn't been an issue yet so if you're looking for that you're going to have you're going to probably have some frustrations and wish that, oh man, I wish this thing could quantize. Maybe they might be able to do it. It's all digital. Well, at least most of it is. So maybe they might firmware update it or whatever to do that. But I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy this uh, thinking that that's going to happen. I would buy this just for what it is now. And then hopefully other things, you know, maybe new features come in, but usually Erica's sense is pretty good about having a direction of what they want to do and putting that thing out and then just fixing whatever bugs are there with maybe a feature added here or there, but they have an intention. They know what they're doing. They know what they want to do, at least what they want to provide. And and that's what usually what you see is what you get out of it. And I, I fully recommend it. So I hope I covered enough. Uh, let me see if I had something else to say. No, I think that's it. Thanks for watching. I, I appreciate everybody. I hope to make some more good music with it and uh, take care, everyone.